Hi there, marketing researchers. Welcome to our conversation about secondary information and secondary research in marketing. Across these several videos, there are several things that you should learn. First, you should be able to distinguish between primary and secondary data, particularly how they're used by marketing researchers. Then, we're going to see some of the most common ways that secondary data is used by marketers. And importantly, we should be able to identify the advantages and disadvantages of those different types. We're also going to illustrate some of the common ways that we actually use secondary data to solve marketing problems. You should be able to explain how we use these tools as well. Importantly, because we're marketing researchers, we can't simply use secondary data without a critical eye. We have to actually be able to evaluate and critique the quality of the secondary data and make a educated judgment about whether or not it's good enough of good enough quality to be used for our purposes. Finally, we need to learn how to actually use some of the most common industry standard secondary data tools. First, let's introduce some basic terminology about secondary data in marketing research. First, we should distinguish between what's primary data and secondary data. Simply put, primary data is information that you've generated using your own research efforts. Importantly, this is data that was generated specifically to solve a particular research project or research problem. Secondary data, on the other hand, is information that has previously existed, gathered by someone other than the researcher, or for some other purpose, which means you could have actually conducted a primary research project at some point, then realized later you could use some of that data to solve a new marketing research problem. What was once primary data now becomes secondary data. The term secondary data and secondary information is essentially synonymous. There's no major distinction between the two. And sometimes you'll hear the phrase secondary research. That means that we're merely using secondary data to conduct our research project. One of the most common forms of secondary data in marketing research is syndicated data or syndicated research. Most typically, this is marketing research that's performed by another company. This company generally is a for-profit institution and they are conducting this research because they believe it's valuable to numerous other organizations and these organizations pay access to gain for this information. Now a case can be made that in many cases syndicated data or syndicated research may be both primary and secondary data at the same time. Let me illustrate this with an example of GFK. GFK is one of the five largest international marketing research companies in the world. One of their most popular and well-known products is called the Survey of the American Consumer. The survey itself helps you understand the consumption habits of U.S. adults. As it says here, almost 6,000 products in 550 different product categories are measured as well as demographic and psychographic information about consumers. When we mean that this survey is thorough, they're not kidding. Take a look at one partial piece of the 120 plus page booklet that someone has to complete when completing the survey. Here we have questions about people's the number of purchases and ownership of computer printers and fax machines, brands, the types, physical fitness, if they're members of any gyms, and greeting cards. Specifically, the number of greeting cards of different types that people had to purchase in the last 30 days. I think this illustrates just how thorough this particular tool is. Clearly, this information is so wide and diverse that it can be valuable to numerous different marketers in all kinds of different institutions and organizations. So people buy access to this information. But everybody has access to this same information through GFK's reporting tool. But just because this, the survey is thorough does not mean that it's complete. It's entirely possible that a marketer may want some additional unique pieces of information gathered that the overall survey of the American consumer does not collect. GFK offers another product that helps solve this problem. That's called the Omnibus Recontact Study. If you look here, you'll see that the Omnibus Recontact Study enables marketers to address their own particular questions and then link those results to those pieces of information that are already captured by the Survey of the American Consumer. So, in this sense, the Survey of the American Consumer is clearly generating secondary data, but the Omnibus Recontact Study, since you're generating the specific questions you'd like to ask, in that sense, 
primary data is being generated and being merged with secondary data. Here's an illustration of this in, uh, in action. The Digital Place-Based Advertising Association actually sponsored a series of questions that were added to the Omnibus Recontact study, all about people's opinions, specifically their interest, and whether or not they believe they were exposed to digital place-based advertising venues. Now, since the Digital Place-Based Advertising Association wants to increase awareness about digital place-based advertising, they made these results publicly available. But other organizations who are putting questions on the Omnibus Recontact study may keep it private or proprietary. For example, and this is only a hypothetical example, if you look on the left here, these are, some, these are the entire list of premium domestic beers that are currently being measured by the GFK survey. Anchor Steam, Landshark, New Belgium, and so on. And there's questions related, there's also questions about whether or not people surf or windsurf. Now imagine Stone Brewing Company would like to use and analyze their consumption relative to some of these other brands that are already existing in the GFK survey. And they'd also like to know whether or not these people engage in stand-up paddleboard. Now this is a bit of a silly question, I doubt Stone is actually interested in this. But you could imagine a situation here where they might want to use the Omnibus Recontact study to add their own name to the list of beers. Stone might want to know how it stacks up compared to some of its competitors with respect to the percentage of US adults who drank these brands in the last six months. In addition, ask questions about how often people have engaged in stand-up paddleboarding. Again, this would be an example of where a secondary database or secondary data is being complemented with primary data. So what should be clear from here is that sometimes the distinction between secondary and primary data gets a little blurry, but it's safe to say that if we're using information that was already pre-existing in some purpose, marketers typically characterize that as using secondary data.